Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd We're grieving as a community for the recent terrorist attack against two masajid or two mosques in the Christchurch, New Zealand attacks. And the greater community, I believe, grieves along with us. However, this is an illustration that evil indeed exists and will continue to exist, and that terrorism is not restricted to a race of people, not restricted to a tribe of people, not restricted to a particular nation of people. And for us as Muslims, this shows that we have adversaries within the community, meaning groups like ISIS or Daesh, who spill the blood of humanity, predominantly Muslim blood. And then we have those external adversaries as well, such as the white nationalist extremists and their rise and their emboldening or their emboldenment from recent events and the rise of populism, which is around the world. We see this especially in Europe and we see this in America that they are proud of their hatred and they are arrogant with their tactics and emboldened to be increasingly violent. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts those people who were killed and slaughtered during these tragedies, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts them as martyrs because they solely came together to worship Allah. The most peaceful and the most blessed gathering that a human being can be a part of. And this is to have communion with your Lord, to establish the tie and relationship with the creator of the heavens and earth. And this is how they died. They died, they died in the cause of Allah, coming together to worship him and him alone and not expecting that that would be the last day from amongst the women that were killed and the children and the elderly and others. And while we reject all extremism, and all violent, wanton behavior and terrorism. We are especially hard hit in this travesty and from this tragedy. And I myself have personally given this thought and expected something of like the something similar to this evil travesty that has befallen the community to happen for quite some time. We've expected this, some of us, but many of the people in the community are only recently awakened. So there are some lessons that we can draw from this tragedy. First, that the community as a minority community, especially in the Western countries, needs to be vigilant, needs to be aware of your surroundings, and needs to be aware and understand that there are people who just hate you for you and hate you for your religion. That is just the way it is and the way it will be. So don't be deceived and nor deterred by this fact. Similar to other minority groups 
For example, those of us of African-American descent, we've experienced this since the inception of America. From slavery to the perils of segregation and the disenfranchisement and the violence perpetrated from white supremacy up until today. Even the churches, the places of worship were not spared and have not been spared. And so we see that the some of the black churches are now taking their defense very seriously after recent attacks of white supremacists who come in to kill women and children and the most vulnerable from amongst the community. Likewise, the Muslims need to be aware and vigilant. So vigilance is the first thing and awareness. Second, that we must never underestimate is active protection training, meaning that we have to be, we have a right to defend ourselves and whichever country that you live in, you need to be within the constraints of the law in protecting yourself. So for example, in America, we have the right to bear arms. So I advise all of those Muslims who are legally able to to bear an arm, get the training, the proper training and safety to be able to protect themselves and their families, which is their constitutional right, but it's the right that Allah has given us. And that means things such as being able to shoot and break down a firearm, also to be able to operate in different scenarios, for example, from even uh, inside of a vehicle or inside of a masjid. And that also means learning martial arts. And I say this even for our women and our girls. They need this training. And if that be in the context of a country such as the UK, where they don't have that right to bear arms, but it's frequent that people have knife attacks, which is much easier to deal with that people should know how to disarm an attacker and how to prepare for those types of scenarios. The third point of advice and lesson that I think we can learn from this is the importance to have a safety contingency plan in the masjid, meaning there needs to be fire exits, meaning there needs to be uh, plans to be able to deal with in case there's an active shooter during the khutbah or during the congregational prayer. How do you deal with that as a community? And that's why there needs to be active defense trained people in the masjid as well. And if nothing else, at least masjid security. People need to know how to evacuate the masjid in case of some sort of event as what took place yesterday. And how to assist one another in such a scenario. And in talking with one of my brothers, he mentioned as his part of his uh, job and duty is being an active protection trainer, uh, active self-defense trainer, that he mentioned one of the things which is is very important is that to realize it's, it's, it's the mental mindset of when you're in a situation of violence that you, people need training for that, to prepare themselves mentally that they may be injured, they may be shot, but how to strive and not be a sitting duck, so to speak, but rather to strive their best to disarm uh, an attacker. And most importantly, is trusting in Allah, is tawakkul. And the scholars of Islam, they mention a tawakkul huwa ittimad Allah wa fi'l asbab, which means it is to rely, put your trust, your heart totally with Allah and make and take steps 
to fulfill whatever you're trying to achieve. So in protecting yourself, yes, we rely totally on our Lord. And it's to him we will all return. But we at the same time need to take active steps, physical steps to learn how to protect ourselves and our families. To learn how to deal with active shooters. To learn how to defend ourselves and our community. And then put your trust in your heart with the law, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to have mercy upon those who were killed and to have mercy upon their families and those who lost loved ones and to bless them all and grant them all forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deal with those people who have evil intentions towards the community and deal with those evil individuals who caused chaos and mayhem and spilled blood in the community. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.